All right, I want to do a simple example using uh, the label spreading algorithm that's available out of the uh, scikit-learn toolkit. So you already have this skeleton available inside of the Git repository. Uh, in particular, I've, I've brought in both label spreading and label propagation. Label spreading is the algorithm we just sort of sketched out. Uh, label propagation is the more hard class uh, boundary uh, type of an approach. I invite you to play with uh, both of them. Uh, label spreading gives a little bit better results. It's a little bit more stable. And so I'm going to focus here on, on that one. All right. So let's go ahead and bring that into our Python environment. I've defined a scatter plot function. It's really not all that different from what we've uh, worked with before. I'm using a different uh, color map uh, to make things a little bit easier to see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a uh, data set based on a, a cosine. Uh, I'm going to structure it so that it has two classes, but uh, I'm going to structure it such that the, the manifolds uh, in some cases, they're far apart from one another. In other cases, they're quite near to each other. And this will kind of help us uh, understand how this particular algorithm works. So first off, I'm going to define a couple of uh, parameters that we will end up playing with uh, during the, uh, the course of uh, this video. And then let's go ahead and sample time. So this is just our regular sampling uh, over a range from negative one to one, and we'll use our sparsity variable for that. And then our x zero, one of our feature dimensions will just be based on that time variable. The next feature dimension is a cosine over that. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of random noise as well. And we're actually going to define two different manifolds. So I'll call those x1 and x2. And the difference here between the two is that uh, manifold x, x2 manifold is just offset uh, by uh, some defined value. And now let's add the class labels. And, and I'm just giving zeros and ones to the uh, class label set. So, so I'm going to end up, even though I've created this x1 and x2 separately, I'm going to end up appending those together. Uh, and so the first of those will be x1, and they'll be given class label zero, and the second uh, part the X2 samples will be uh, given the class one label. And then finally, we'll, let's uh, bring all these together into a, uh, a full data set. And, and uh, so, so x1 is a function of x0, x2 is a function of, of x0. So I need two different copies of x0. So this is why I'm taking this step. So I'm appending x0 to itself. And then we're going to convert this into a 2D matrix. And, and for x1, I'm going to redefine to be the uh, Let's actually call this one capital X1, and we'll call this one, sorry, capital X0, capital X1, to distinguish them from uh, what we have up here. And here I'm going to append X1 and X2 together. And then finally, we'll concatenate everything together.
and let's ask what X shape is. Oh, and of course, sorry, I'm using the lowercase X's and those should be uppercase. There we go. So now I have uh, 800 samples by uh, two dimensions. And let's go ahead and use our scatter plot function to look at those. And we have our X and, and our uh, true labels. So there we go. Um, so it's, so this one, the blue one here, that's our that that came from our x one. Uh, green came from x two. Notice that there's a little bit of ver vertical variation, and and that's happening uh, because of the uh, the extra bit of noise that we're adding to this. The samples up here and the samples down here. Uh, those are very far away, those manifolds are very far away from samples of the other class. The other interesting thing is that we do kind of get a little bit of uh, clumping and, and some holes as well. So there's a, a hole right in here, which is going to affect our neighborhood relationship. There's some holes right in this vicinity here. And, and so we'll see that in our experiments. All right, so, so the next thing that I'd like to do is uh, go through each of these samples and make a decision as to which ones to set to a class label that means that it actually doesn't have a label. So, so we're going to take a bunch of them and remove their class labels. And so I'm going to define a probability of stripping that class label. And we'll call this uh, new label Y corrupt. So, so for the algorithm that we're going to be using, a class label of negative one actually means that it's uh, not uh, labeled. And then other integers that are used are actual label uh, labels for those samples. Let me type this out and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so uh, we're iterating over everything in the original label set here. And, uh, and then we've got two different possible things that can happen. Uh, if a random number is less than P, uh, then we're going to set our label to negative one, and otherwise we're going to keep the original label. Let's go ahead and execute that, and let's plot this. And, and now instead of using Y, we're going to use our Y corrupt. And, these colors here were automatically assigned. They're going to show up differently. Uh, Scatterplot's going to sh assign those differently here for, the, for this next step. Okay, so, so now what the colors mean here is that uh, blue corresponds to unlabeled, and uh, of which there are 90% of our samples are in that category. Red corresponds to our, our X1 label, or it actually has a, a class label of zero, uh, and green is class label one. And you can see that red is shows up in most most regions. Here's a region here where we don't have any red uh, samples. Uh, likewise, in here, we've got some greens down here and greens up here, but no green samples in between. So, th so this is one of the challenges for our learning algorithm is whether or not we can fill in uh, the the green label to these samples here or or is uh, the neighborhood relationship going to be such that uh, the samples, the reds over here, will leak over to, to the manifold here? All right, so now that we've set up our data set, um, first, for actually, the first thing I want to do is uh, shift our offset from one to two. So it's going to move our, our two cosines further away from one another. This will make it a little bit easier initially on our learning algorithm, and then we'll will make it harder. All right, so let's go ahead and, and try some label spreading. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a model. And the two types of kernels that are built in are K nearest neighbors and RBF. Uh, what I found was that K nearest neighbors, it, it always take, you have to define what K is. It always takes K whether or not they are near or far away from one another, from, from your current sample. With an RBF kernel, we are sensitive to the distances and there's lots of influence by local neighbors. 
but uh, as we uh, get further away, the further away neighbors, even if they're within that top K, the closest K, they'll have very little influence. So you tend to end up with uh, more stable results here. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to RBF, and I'll set N jobs to negative one. The default max editor probably will work fine for you. I, I was playing with a variety of different things and I, I felt like I needed to have that higher. Uh, and, and then there's this gamma parameter, which really sets the width of our RBF kernel. And we'll start out at a one here. And let's go ahead and fit our model. And we'll give it the X and the Y corrupt. And that actually executes really fast, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and now let's ask what our model will predict for all of our samples. And then we're gonna go ahead and plot this. Okay, so, so just as a reminder, um, this is the data set that we're handing our model. So most samples are not labeled. And, uh, and here's the result. This is the, the labeling by our label propagation uh, algorithm. So what's, what's interesting here is that, uh, is that for the most part, we've done a good job of uh, separating these two different manifolds from one another. Where we're running into trouble are th these areas right in here. Uh, and, and that's happening because these are the regions that are closest to the other manifold. Our gamma is set pretty low right now, so our neighborhood relationship is actually pretty broad. So, so let's go ahead and try as an experiment, let's try setting our gamma up by an order of magnitude. And you can see here that, uh, at least for this particular run, the, the amount of crossover between the two different manifolds has dropped a little bit. There's certainly a lot fewer greens uh, out over here and over here, fewer blues in this part of the manifold. So let's kick gamma up a bit more. Okay, so with a gamma of 100 now, uh, the two manifolds are being identified as we would want knowing what the true labels are. Now, of course, in, in general, we don't have the benefit of knowing what those true labels uh, really are. Uh, so one has to uh, really make sure you take some very careful steps about uh, visualizing uh, the set of labels that you end up with when, when you're using an algorithm like this. Okay, so let's make the problem just a little bit harder by pushing these two manifolds closer together. So that takes me all the way back up toward the top where uh, our offset, we're gonna set that to one. So there's our set of true labels now. Those cosines are much more interlocked. And we've got to corrupt that data set. And there's what that looks like. So again, the, we have 90% that are unlabeled and the remaining are either red or green. And now let's try out our label spreading algorithm. Okay, so there's the uh, result there. Things are much further away from what we really had in mind. So, so we've got this green here uh, and here in the what we thought was the, the blue manifold. And likewise, um, these regions here, actually these regions here are, are doing the right thing. Um, but we've got this region here, for example, where blue is crossing over to the other manifold. So, so because these two manifolds have come closer together, our distance metric is really uh, allowing labels to propagate from say this region of the manifold over to here. And, and let's kind of take a look, let's remember this region right in here and look at the original data set. So that region was right in here. And one thing to, to note is that there are no true labels within this part of the manifold. And in particular, there are some pretty big gaps uh, along the manifold right in here and, uh, and right in here and right down here. So 
so it's actually quite easy for the, the labels to hop from this part of the manifold over to here, since because of our particular distribution of samples, uh, the propagation is difficult along uh, from this region here up uh, or from uh, all the way up here, uh, it's hard for labels to propagate all the way down. So, so the, the sparsity of our true labels is certainly playing a role here. So let's look back again. So, so what's nice is that the, the true label that was sitting up here, that's actually propagated a reasonable distance down. And, and likewise, the true label that was down, down in the corner down here has propagated part of the way up. But we've left this region here that's not exactly part of the manifold uh, just because of those gaps. We, we've left it such that uh, the algorithm just had to do the best it, it could with the information that it had. And, and really, the true label samples are, were closer. So, so they hopped across. So, so let's, let's play with that uh, corruption question here. So right now, we're, we're, we only have 10% of true labels. Let's go down to, let's go to 20%. So 80% of our samples will, uh, will be unlabeled. So now there are more greens and reds here. And, and in particular, this one area of, of uh, concern, now we actually have a green sample in each one of these zones. I guess this one here still does not have a label. So it's an interesting question as to whether the algorithm will pull from the reds here or, uh, or will propagate the, the green labels over to here. So let's give that a try. Okay, so, so indeed, uh, that region that we were concerned about, the, the, the samples did hop from this manifold over to here. It's also interesting that we had the, the labels here hop over to the other side. Let's just take a quick look at that. Right, so this is a, a region, again, that's fairly sparse in terms of just representation of samples. Uh, and it's a, a little ways away from the red sample, so the, the greens uh, turned out to, to win out there. Okay, so let, let's play with this a little bit more and see if we can clean this up a bit more uh, such that our uh, labels are a bit more what we were looking for. And the place that we're gonna play with is in this gamma parameter. And, and again, as gamma gets larger and larger, what that means is that uh, we're gonna pay much more attention to the immediate neighbors than to neighbors that are further away. And so maybe we can prevent the labels from hopping across the, the manifolds. So, so there we go. So this is using exactly that same data set. Um, actually, down in here, things have not really changed uh, all that much. And likewise, uh, uh, over here. So let's try kicking gamma up one more order of magnitude. We may or may not be able to solve this one. And in fact, we have not cleaned that up. OK, so, so the. The, the message in this particular case is, is that there's only so far that we can go. I, I invite you to play a little bit more with the, with, with the parameters to see if you can uh, clean this up even further under these conditions. There are, of course, a variety of things that we can change to make the problem simpler for the algorithm. We can, uh, we can corrupt fewer uh, samples, remove the labels from, from fewer samples. Uh, we can also uh, reduce the that noise component, uh, and and as we start to get, uh, if if we reduce that noise down to uh, down to zero, then what we what you'd end up with are two perfect cosines. So the spacing between the samples is going to be a lot more regular, and and that'll make it much easier for the algorithm to propagate the uh, labels along the the manifolds that we were expecting. All right, so that's the very quick demo of uh, the label spreading algorithm that's available in Scikit-Learn. And, and next up, let's talk a little bit about the regression side of things.